with premise, you get metadata about the history of a digital object, a resource. Um, but there are other metadata schemas out there that go deeper into what's called provenance. Now, provenance is kind of a tricky word, and there's actually some disagreement about how exactly to define the word provenance. But for our purposes here, this definition will do, mostly because it's from the W3C's Provenance Incubator Group, which is part of the W3C's semantic web activity. The definition is that provenance of a resource is a record that describes entities and processes involved in producing and delivering or otherwise influencing that resource. In other words, provenance means not just the history back in time of a resource, but the relationships between that resource and other entities that have influenced its history, right? So you, as a user, have a way to evaluate the trustworthiness of the resource because you know who has influenced it and touched it and had some input into it over its history. Now, the whole idea of provenance, according to the W3C's incubator group, is that it's all about trust because the web is a big place. You don't necessarily know anything about the individual or the group that created a resource or modified a resource or had some input into how that resource was created, etc. You just don't know everything there is to know. So you need some mechanism to give you information about what input what relationships other entities other people and organizations had on the resource that you're looking at right is that resource is that information trustworthy and the only way to know that is to know how trustworthy those other organizations those other people are so uh, way back in unit one i defined metadata as description and in the interview that I conducted with him, Clifford Lynch gave us a different definition. And one, frankly, that I like a little bit better, particularly for this purpose. Clifford Lynch's definition of metadata was an assertion that someone makes about something. And that's, I think, a better definition, at least in the context of provenance, because it kind of explicitly brings to mind the notion of trust, right? Because an assertion that someone makes about something, well, you immediately should be suspicious. Who's this someone making the assertion and what do they know anyway? So, yes, the description of the history of an object and its relationships is description, right? So my definition still holds, but when talking about provenance, what we're really talking about is the trust that you, and you are one entity, has in another entity. We're really talking about trust when we're talking about provenance. So, to illustrate this, let's talk about the previous example that I used way back in the Dublin Core unit, uh, the example of the Mona Lisa. This is the triple in which I make the statement, Leonardo da Vinci is the creator of the Mona Lisa. Subject, predicate, object. The provenance question is, says who? Who says that Leonardo da Vinci is the creator of the Mona Lisa. Well, in this example, I say, I say that Leonardo da Vinci is the creator of the Mona Lisa. Well, I'm not an art historian, so maybe you're not going to believe me. Now, if the Louvre, that entity, says Leonardo da Vinci 
is the creator of the Mona Lisa. Maybe you're going to believe it because we might have some metadata about the Louvre or some metadata about the Mona Lisa that says the relationship between those two entities is that the Mona Lisa is in the collection of the Louvre. Therefore, the Louvre as an entity is in a position to know who the creator of the Mona Lisa is. Whereas I, just some guy off the street, not knowing much about art, am not necessarily in a trustworthy position with regard to the Mona Lisa and its provenance. There is not the kind of standardization that we've seen in other areas, like with Dublin Core, in the area of metadata for provenance. There are several metadata schemas out there for data about provenance, and none of them are universally accepted yet. They're still kind of all jockeying for position and being developed and whatnot. So perhaps over the next few years, we'll see one or more emerge as a standard, but that hasn't actually happened yet. Not even within the universe of provenance, like EXIF has emerged as a common standard in the arena of digital cameras, right? That's become a standard, even if it's just in a narrow domain. That hasn't happened yet in the arena of provenance. So one standard that's been proposed is the open provenance model. And you'll notice that there are, like the other metadata schemas that we've already looked at, there are classes and there are properties. Classes are categories of things, like the role of an entity and then the properties are relationships, things like effect and, you know, end time and relationships between entities. Another metadata schema out there is the provenance vocabulary core ontology specification. And again, you get classes and properties and the classes are things like data creation and data publisher and whatnot. Again, entities. And the properties are relationships, accessed resource, right? When did such and such an entity access something? Or, you know, created by, which entity created what resource created by? Yet another metadata schema being proposed for provenance is something that with the, I think, really great name of Prove. And this is a data model for Prove, and you get three what are called core structures, entity, agent, and activity, and you get relationships, right? Activity was informed by some other activity, or one entity was derived from another entity, or such and such an entity was attributed to such and such an agent, right? The entity Mona Lisa was attributed to the agent Leonardo da Vinci, for example, right? So you get a full-blown data model here with relationships between entities. And then Prove also provides you with a map of these core structures and the relationships among them. For example, you get entity, activity, and agent, and then you get a set of relationships, was generated by, you know, was derived from, etc. So again, you get these set of relationships being defined among the entities in the universe of provenance. And so out of all of this, Again, the W3C's Provenance Incubator Group, which is the group that gave us the definition of provenance that we looked at at the beginning of this video, proposes in their final report of this particular working group, they propose a provenance interchange language, right? The idea is that this working group has proposed a set of core elements for provenance, a set of core metadata elements that is the baseline necessary set of elements to describe the provenance of any kind of entity. Again, this has not yet been widely accepted universally, but it's a proposal 
and because it's from the W3C, it probably has some legs. And over the next few years, we may see it be adopted a little bit more widely. And the set of elements is what you might expect when we're talking about the history of an object and its set of relationships with other entities. Things like agent, right? who's responsible for such and such, and role, what is the role of that agent in the lifespan of a resource. Control and participation, again, these relationships between one entity that influences the lifespan of another entity. The idea of the provenance interchange language is that like Dublin Core, it would become a core element set for metadata to describe the provenance of resources on the web and disseminated over networks generally.